We'll get started. Wow, welcome back my fabulous studio audience and people that are watching right now. We're just grateful that you're connecting, right? You're amazing, you're extraordinary. You have to believe that for yourself, right? Some days you gotta wake up and, and you gotta dress up and make yourself feel good about yourself. I mean, and kind of just take those labels off, the labels that people said about you, right? Growing up, I was told a lot of things and for a very long time, I believed it. I really thought I was worthless. I really thought I was a non-educated person. I really thought I was that little loser girl that I was gonna grow, that they said I was gonna grow up to be and just things like that, right? When you're a little kid, people telling you, you know, you're so stupid, get get the heck out of here, butt out of my, butt, butt out, I don't know, Hispanics, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna relate to this. You tell your little kid, get out of an adult conversation. You're not supposed to be here. You remember all those things? Yeah, we gotta shake those things off because you know what? You're amazing, you're extraordinary, you're beautiful. You gotta take, you gotta say those things to you. you I, I, what I want today is I want the fight inside of you to say my life is worth living. Your life is worth living. So I don't care what has held you back. No more isolation, no more keeping secrets, no more lies from hell, right? Nothing, you're not, you're not done. Your, your past does not define who you are today. And some of you might be dealing with that, thinking my past is defining me today. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna get that out. You're not a victim and your past does not define you today. You, your life is worth living, amen? I want you to receive that, believe it, and live it loud. We're called to live loud, bold, and confident, amen? Let's pray right there where you're at as we get ready to start. If you have not seen the last two messages, this is Jericho part three. Jericho part one is shout. Jericho part two is march. This is Jericho part three keep on marching or keep marching, right? That's the title of this message. Let's pray. God, more of you and less of me. All of you, God, and less of me. We're ready to receive. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're going to focus on, on the scripture in Joshua 6, 15, and 16. And this time I'm going to change the translation because we were focusing on the last two messages with the message. But we're going to do the New Living Translation. It goes on to say, on the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time, they went around the town seven times. So remember what I told you, the, the geographic or the demographics of this town, it literally took the Israelites one hour to go around the town. But this one morning specifically, they, ha they were instructed, remember I told you that Joshua mentality, march, you don't see it coming happening, march, right, Joshua mentality. So, so on this day, it was the seventh day, and, and, they, and, and um, they marched seven times. So that's seven hours. And on the seventh time, the scripture goes on to say, as the priest sounded the loud blast of their horns, Joshua commanded the people to what? shout, right? Shout for the Lord has given you the town. And then we're going to jump down now to 20, Joshua 6, 20, still in the new, in, in the new living translation. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Have you ever had that shout that's just stuck inside of you? It might be a shout of frustration, a shout of annoyance that, you know what, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of hold these walls holding me back. That's what, that's what that shout is. So these people were just sick and tired that they were intimidated by the intimidators on the other side saying, I'm, you know, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I want to know what's behind that wall, and I'm ready for this battle. So, so they shouted as loud as they could. And guess what? Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. So shout, march, and keep on marching. Amen? So you got to get to a point in your life where you say enough is enough, right? We get to that point. I can tell you at one point of my life, 
I got to that point where I said, okay, enough is enough. I, I can't deal with this anymore. I, I'm tired of dealing with generational curses. I'm tired that I'm always in this pit. I'm tired that I don't see it happening for me. I'm tired. I got to that point in my life and I started to stop, I started to stop focusing on what people had or what people did or how they got where they got. And I focused on God and his plan for my life. That's what happened. That's what happened. And, and so sometimes there's things that we say, you know, something's got to give. And these walls have to come down. And there's a world out there. And, that w and, and there's a life that I have to live. How do we got to live it? Live it fiercely. You got to live it bold, confident, and courageous. Some of these walls that we, we've held on to actually become our strongholds of life, Right? I don't know what walls you're holding. I don't know what offense you're holding. I don't know what happened in 1976 that you cannot forgive that person. And we're in 2022, which is 46 years later, and you're still holding on to that. I don't know what it is, but that literally can be a stronghold and keep you there. Strongholds are all lies from hell. That's all it is. All lies from hell. And some of those lies can be really can really reinforce our personality over and over and over that they become bigger and stronger and it's harder to get out of them. So what do you mean? What do you mean? What I mean is, let me give you an example. Imagine I'm six years old and you have your aunts telling you you're not going to amount to anything. So I want you to picture you talking to a six-year-old saying you're not going to be nothing you're nothing, you're gonna grow up to be a whore. So they're painting the picture of your future and they want you to believe it. But how can you tell a six-year-old little girl is gonna be a whore? And how can you tell that a six-year-old little girl is not gonna be anybody? You can't. They were just vessels for Satan to use to spew out toxic poison to a six-year-old little girl so that six-year-old little girl does not find her destiny and her purpose where God wants her to be. And that was my story. The enemy was trying to stop me even before I understood. He was trying to stop the revelation even before I understood what my aunts were saying to me. But thank God... He created a loud girl, I'm loud, and I'm tough. They, there's a song called Titanium. Uh, he made my skin so titanium that, you know what, the words that they used to tell me, okay, they affected me for a while, but then I realized, wait a minute, the devil tried killing me also when I was 15 at gunpoint while, my, while I was being raped with five gang members. He tried killing me then there. So then that's obvious. God has a plan for my life, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take what God says, and I'm going to release the strongholds from the past. So you got to get to that point in your life where you expose the enemy, and you know that he's trying to stop you, and you know that he doesn't want you to succeed, and you know that he's afraid of the God inside of you. you got, I mean, come on. You know when your big brother is present and you know he's going to defend you, that you're not afraid of nothing. So guess what? God is right there, present, so you shouldn't be afraid of anything. Amen? So you got to get to a point where you start to think that those walls, they're not protecting you. If you continue to hold on to those walls, you're going to start to think they're protecting you. Then you start to isolate yourself. Then you close in. And then you become unapproachable because the moment someone approaches you, you're like, what, what, what do you want? What do you want? Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you, right away, you're ready to fight, and they haven't even said anything. They just wanted to tell you, hey, do you want to go out to dinner? And you're like, I'm going to fight. What, 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 what are you going to tell me now? No, we got to get to the point where we stop those things. Those are walls, right? So today we're going to get to the point where we say enough is enough. You got to say I'm free. I'm not a prisoner. I'm going to I'm going to get a I'm not going to be held by those walls to keep me captive anymore. I'm going to trust God. That's all God's asking you is to trust him. God wants you to believe him and what he has for you and your future. God wants you to believe him for your healing. God wants you to believe him that you're delivered and set free. We're all set free. 
We're all of us, every single one of us have been set free when he said it is finished. You see, he said it is finished. And I, I know I'm, it ain't a resurrection story, but uh, a resurrection message. But let me tell you my revelation to it is finished. When Jesus was on that cross and he said it is finished, the devil was laughing, thinking, oh, yeah, he's finished. No, Jesus meant you're finished, devil, because I just multiplied myself. But people don't get that revelation. It is finished. That means Jesus was telling the devil, you're finished because I just multiplied myself. Guess what? Every single one of us that believes in Jesus Christ and his resurrection and his death and everything becomes instantaneously available for us. So that power is inside of us. That presence of God is inside of us. You are set free. You are healed. You are delivered. You have that power to say, you know what? My, my God, my daddy, my God, my, whatever you want to call him, he is present then he's there ready to defend you. You shouldn't be afraid of anything. No sickness, no death, no psychiatric issues, whatever it is. Nothing should hold you back. I'm off topic on my message. Let's go back to Jericho. So even if you're marching around the wall that we built over our life, God expects us to trust him every step of the way, even when we don't see the sign. How many of us have been marching for years and we don't see the promise yet? Or we're marching for years and we don't see the miracle yet, right? I know there's times that we don't see the fruit of the effort that we give. And we, we, we we're going to church. We're faithful. We're giving. We're praising. We're fasting. 18 years this coming year. I mean, well, I'm already counting the months. I'm like, oh, my God, I love food. But when, it's, when we we fast, we have that time with God alone, right? And so even though you don't see the fruit of the effort at which you put into your lives, God is asking you to trust him. Trust him. Keep praying. Keep attending church. Keep serving. Never stop giving. You got to keep marching even when you don't see it. Keep marching even when you don't see anything. Keep marching when you haven't heard anything. Keep marching, but it's coming. Consistency requires faith. So you got to keep marching. Consistency will bring results. You got to keep marching, right? Let me, let me give you an example. If you start telling your wife she's beautiful every day, you're going to see results. If you start telling your husband he's wise, you're gorgeous, you're going to see results. If you start um, praising your children when they do good things, you're going to see results in the change of their behavior. When you recognize people, you're going to notice that you influence them and they're going to follow you. Why? Because you're going to see results. When you eat right, you're going to see results. When you exercise, you're going to see results. Sometimes results do not happen instantaneously, and I know, but it requires what? Consistency, right? Why don't you ask a bodybuilder how many years they spent creating, conditioning, and scoping their bodies? They didn't just say, okay, I'm going to go work out today, guys, and tomorrow I'm waking up with a six-pack. No, it doesn't happen that way. It takes time. It's called consistency, doing the same routine, changing the habits. Instead of picking up a beer, pick up a bottle of water for the next year, and you're going to see the, the difference in your face. The, you're not going to look 20 years older because you've been chugging the beer for 20 years, 365 days. Your skin's going to look clear, just like Daniel when he said, give me vegetable and water and let those people eat the beef and drink the wine, and let's see who's stronger at the end of the fast. It's just like that. You will see it takes consistency. You just don't work out and wake up with a six-pack the next day. You see, when the Israelites walked, so now let's talk about Jericho again. When the Israelites walked around Jericho, it wasn't the first day, the one hour, okay, deliverance. No, they had to, God was preparing them to fight the giants in the land. God is asking you to march. It is because he's preparing you for the fight. So if you don't see anything happening and he says march, you march. If you don't see, hear anything, you march. If you don't see the promises come to pass, you march. Until he says it is time to shout. Amen. So it's not any different with us. As we serve, as you pray, as you give, God is preparing you to handle the greater things that are coming into your life. So even in the middle of your marching, we all may fail. We might make mistakes, right? But God has, is preparing us for bigger things. 
one thing you got to understand it is God is never lost. My husband mentioned it in a message. God was never lost. God was never hidden. He has been there since the beginning. He knew you before he formed you. He knew your mama before she was formed. He knew your grandma before she was formed. He was way back at Genesis 0, 0. God knew you. He knew you were Jacqueline. He knew you were Monica. He knew you were Alexis, even way before the foundations of this earth. So he's never been lost. He's been present at all times. He's omnipresent, right? And so it doesn't matter what failures we've made, mistakes we've made, the bad things of our past. God has not kept himself from our lives. He doesn't love what we, the mistakes we make, but he's watching you as you make them, and he's hoping that you learn from them. Amen? And so God loves us, and, and he, he, he loves us, and he wants to develop our perseverance. But God is getting ready to set us up, and even though we're marching and it seems frustrating and we're not seeing the things, God is the only one that can redeem us from our failures, our downfalls, and our setbacks. We just have to keep marching when we don't see the manifestation of his promises. Many people get discouraged, right? And they want to throw in the towel. I don't see nothing, Pastor. I've been going to church for 10 years, and I, I, I think this Sunday it's just I don't feel good. I'm not going to go. And then, uh, okay, I'll come this Sunday. Okay, now, and you were faithfully serving, and then now you're just slowly cutting him out. You're etching him out of your life. Oh, no, well, God's everywhere. You know, Pastor, you say God's everywhere, but, you know, I, I guess I can see him in the toilet in a little bit and in the shower later at night. No, 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 no. You got to stay consistent, right? You're never going to become that strong person unless you have a community of people. Yeah, not perfect people, imperfect people that work together, love each other. And remember, life is relational. You need a community of people that love you, that are for you, that want to add to you, not subtract from you, offer you a beer to kill you one day shorter of your life while you drive your car drunk. No, no, no. I'm talking about someone that's going to love you, pray for you, be here for you, right? Many of us get discouraged and we want to throw in that towel, but I'm telling you, it involves consistency. Stay consistent. Yes, okay, you got offended in the church, but stay consistent. Why are you going to let one person run you out of a church? You don't let one person run you out of the church. You don't let the devil mess with you. You don't let one person run you from the love of God, right? So keep on marching. While you're marching, God's developing your character. While you're marching, God's developing perseverance in your life. While you're marching, God is making you stronger. While you're marching, God is making a way out. While you're marching, God is he's cleaning up the, the appearance of your inside, taking out that junk, taking out all that toxin. Not, he's not focused on your outside, even though some of us focus more on the outside. God is focusing on the inside of you, but you got to get to the point where you say, I don't quit. Quitting is not an option. That's like my motto. I love saying that all the time. Quitting is not an option. Not a person, not a devil, not a lie, not a haste, not the, whatever the naysayer said should stop you, make you quit for anything. It might be painful. Yeah, it might be frustrating. It might be annoying. It might even be a difficult month for you this year. But you know what? God wants you to keep marching. There's breakthrough on the way, and you will make it out. Amen? All right. So today, you're activating your faith by listening to this message. You're activating your faith. Remember that what lies ahead of you is greater than what lies, the lies from hell. It, what lies ahead of you is greater than the lies from hell. What lives inside of you, God, is far greater. You are, you're always in the process of maturing. You gotta maximize your potential. You gotta lean on God. You gotta rely on God. You gotta learn to trust God and say goodbye to yesterday and walk into the future with confidence. You have to walk in boldly and fierce, right? Let me pray for you right there where you're at and declare over you right now. I declare today that you're marked with victory. You're marked that you're marked victorious. You're marked healthy anxiety-free, grace-defined, destiny over your lives. 
I want you to be encouraged today. Stand strong, love God, love people, serve others, and change the world, amen? And I wanna take this opportunity right there where you're at. As you can see, you're gonna text City Church INT to 77977. It's down below the, we wanna say thank you for your generous gifts. And right now I wanna speak that God, may he increase his promises and his miracles in your life, revelation in your life. May God increase wisdom in your life. May he increase wealth in your life. May he increase lifespan on earth in your lives. That as you give, may he increase maturity, obedience, increase the word, his word in your life and favor and grace and influence today. In Jesus name we pray, amen.